So the next chapter really focuses more on how stars are born and how stars live their lives and how stars ultimately die or end their lives. And the mass of a star actually drives a lot of that, what we call stellar evolution. But um, we've, I've kind of alluded to some stages of a star's life um, with the word main sequence, um, uh, giants, the white dwarfs, that sort of thing. But just to kind of focus on the HR diagram and what it means to be a star in what we call its life state cycle called the main sequence. I think I already mentioned that most stars in the nighttime sky are in their stage of life we call the main sequence. And if a star is a main sequence star, then it's doing what our sun is doing with regard to producing energy. It, it, in, in the core of that star, then it must be fusing hydrogen into helium, basically, and creating energy. Okay, so main sequence stars are fusing hydrogen into helium in their cores. And this set of stars, this band of stars from the upper left to the lower right um, on the HR diagram, um, the, the upper right are more luminous, sorry, the upper left, dang it, the upper left, this up here, the upper left are more luminous and hotter, right? And the lower right are less luminous and cooler as far as being main sequence in this particular luminosity class. Um, and as it turns out, these upper left um, stars, I think I might have mentioned before, are more massive. And these lower right stars on the main sequence are less massive. So we have the high mass stars on this band of stars we call main sequence. And then we have the low mass stars down here in the lower right hand corner. That's what we call the mass, the mass luminosity relationship for main sequence stars. Again, main sequence stars are just in their cores fusing, in the core of those stars, fusing hydrogen to form helium. That's the sort of nuclear fusion going on in their core. Well, main sequence stars, like our sun, are what we call stable. Do you remember in the chapter on the sun, chapter 10, we talked about this um, um, gravitational equilibrium where gravity would have the sun get smaller, but the, what the energy, the radiation being produced in the sun's core would have the star or the sun get larger. And there's a balance between those two. Um, I think I'll go ahead and play this for you. It's kind of a subtle animation. It's already going if you can see it. So um, this hydrostatic equilibrium or this gravi gravitational equilibrium says that gravity, the force of gravity, is directly balanced by the outward force of, um, of uh, radiation that is produced during nuclear fusion in the core. And from left to right, if you kind of focus, if you look at the magnitude of, of the gravity, we have with this larger star over here, notice that we have more gravity pushing in, but we also have more radiation pushing out. That's why, or kind of related to that, the rate of fusion in the cores of those more massive stars is, is greater. The rate of fusion is greater to counterbalance that larger force of gravity um, pulling in on it. So just to kind of summarize, and this would be, I think, just focusing on stars as they are main sequence stars. The luminosity of a star generally varies um, out there, different types of stars, but we have stars relative to our sun that are 0 0.0001 times the luminosity of our sun, all the way up to, what, a, a million times the luminosity of our sun. And I went ahead and on either side here, went ahead and put the, the relative solar masses. So for instance, those low luminosity stars would be regarding relative mass to our sun would be like 0.08 solar masses. Those really luminous um, stars out there would be 100 times the mass of our sun. We also have an assortment of temperatures out there. Now these are surface temperatures, not core temperatures. Again, the, um, the lower temperature, a main sequence star, would be our lighter stars. 
and the higher temperature main sequence stars would be our most massive stars. And remember that we get the mass, we understand the mass, we can infer the mass of a star based upon its interaction with um, a fellow star or stars, how it's orbiting, common center of mass. And generally speaking, and, and when we talk about stars being born, we're going to see that kind of a, a lower limit on stars to becoming a star, it needs to have at least 0.08 times the mass of our sun. The upper side of a star being a stable star would be 100 times the mass of our star. So the main sequence is um, where a star spends most of its life. And um, our sun, uh, based upon its original mass that formed it, basically had about 10 billion, um, 10 billion years worth of fuel to be a main sequence star, to be fusing hydrogen in its um, core to form helium. Well, if you up the size of a star, for instance, take the size of our star and take it, take that mass and times 10, notice that it's going to run through its fuel more quickly. And so basically then, the life expectancy of that star is only, um, uh, it's down by a factor of, oh, sorry, here it is. <laughs> Instead of being uh, 10, uh, 10 billion years, it's only 10 million years is how long it's going to take to go through its life, even though it's more massive. And so we said lighter stars, let's go ahead and take a star that's only a tenth the size mass of our sun, it's going to um, last a lot longer. And it's going to, instead of 10 billion years, like our sun, it's going to last 100 billion years in order to use up all of its uh, mass um, in its core to basically convert the majority of its core from hydrogen to helium. So just to kind of summarize here, our high mass stars tend to be, will be the most luminous um, as main sequence stars. They will have the shortest life as main sequence stars and their radii will be the largest. And they'll generally have the color blue. Our low mass stars generally ha will have low luminosity. They will live a long time, but like the Energizer bunnies. They will have a relatively small radius, and they will generally be the color red. So an example of a high mass star is Spica. And actually, it's 11 times the mass of our sun. And you can see that its life is going to be about 10 million years. Sirius is a lighter star than um, Spica, and notice that its lifespan is longer. It's still bluish. Okay, these are all V type um, or five spectral class five. So these are all main sequence stars. Then comes our Sun. <clears throat> An example of a low mass star is Proxima Centauri. Notice it's about 0.12 solar masses. Um, and you can see how long it's going to last, live. Uh, 10 to the 12th was that 1 trillion years. So 